Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy that you wanted to join me today because today I'm going to take you guys through a list of 20 things, everyday products and, you know, consumer goods that contain plastic and you perhaps don't know some of them, perhaps you do know some of them. Some of these actually did surprise me, so I am kind of excited for this. These are 20 things that contain plastic that you might did not know about, so let's do this. The first one is gum. Yeah, normal conventional chewing gum actually contains up to 20% plastic. And you perhaps kind of already know this because have you considered that if you drop your gum on the ground or if you like stick it to a tree or something, it's going to be there always because there's so much gum on the street, in trees, everywhere. I see it in parks, on sidewalks. And there's a reason for that because it doesn't compost, it doesn't deteriorate, it doesn't dissolve because it contains plastic. Most gum is made from a plant-based gum base but also contain plastic components. Crazy. Number two is clothes or specifically clothes made from synthetic fibers like for instance polyester. What happens is that whenever you wash a synthetic material or whenever you wear it actually it releases microplastic because synthetic materials like for instance polyester are based on fossil materials aka plastic. time we wash our laundry they're going to be released microplastic into our oceans and into our water systems. What you can do instead is you can actually use a copy bag or a water filtration system to make sure that not a lot of this is happening. It is estimated that a normal load of laundry does release over 20,000 pieces of microplastic. Cool. Number three is paper cups which is funny because, you know, aha, they're paper. But the cups you get for your soda at fast food places or the coffee you get in your little coffee cup actually are not made from 100% cardboard or paper. They often contain a paper lining to make sure that the beverage does not dissolve the paper. But as a result of that, it cannot be recycled with paper or cardboard. It only can end up in landfill. Number four is receipts. Receipts, you know, like the little like piece of paper you get whenever you buy something. If you have the option to refuse it and make sure they don't print it either way, that's a really, really good idea because that little piece of paper is actually also containing plastic and cannot be recycled with paper recycling. And they do also contain insane amounts of BPAs, which is a known hormone disruptor. So yeah, they are completely uncompostable and they're completely unrecyclable and will always end up in the landfill or in an incinerator, you know. Then we have Tetra Pak. Tetra Pak is usually the kind of packaging that you make cartons out of, like milk cartons or juice cartons, stuff like that. It also just seems like that is a cardboard or paper material, but in fact it's a mixed material that both mixes plastic, cardboard and aluminium. And in most places it's completely unrecyclable. I know it's possible to recycle in both Sweden and in Portugal and perhaps other places as well, but in a lot of cases it's just going to end up in landfill, sadly. If you want to know how you can avoid Tetra Pak, for instance, if you want to get plant milk, zero waste, you can make it yourself. I have three recipes right here on this channel for you to make your own plant milk that's completely zero waste, which is pretty cool. Then we have bioplastic. And bioplastic, I have a whole other video about really getting into detail with what bioplastic is, plant-based plastic, you know, all the like natural plastic, um, but most bioplastics also contain normal plastic. It's usually a 70-30 kind of situation and as a result of that most bioplastics is completely unrecyclable because it cannot be recycled as 100% bioplastic and it can't be recycled as plastic either because it contains plant-based components. So a mix, which is usually what we see in a lot of especially disposable plant-based plastic products, is that it's a mix between between several things and that's actually worse than simple petroleum based plastic but if you want to know more about this I suggest watching the video that I made specifically on that topic. Then there is silicone. Silicone is something that I really want to make a video about so hang on tight it is 100% coming but there's a lot of misconceptions about silicone but it does actually contain plastic additives. Silicone is usually believed to be made out of sand aka silicon but that's not completely the truth because in order for in order to make silicone you need to treat the silicon at really high temperatures and you also add fossil fuel derived 
added additives, aka plastic components. So although it is better than just normal petroleum-based plastic, it is not completely free from petroleum-based plastic. So I do definitely recommend thinking about how you consume silicone and not over-consume it because it is plastic related. It is not a type of plastic per se, but it's definitely in the neighborhood. Then there is tea bags. Yeah, this is one of the things that I learned a couple of years back and it did surprise me quite a lot because I always just thought that tea bags were cotton based, linen based, I don't know, but definitely not made from plastic. But most tea bags are actually just made from polyester, normal polyester. And I don't know if you sort of can imagine what happens if you have boiling water and you dip a bag of polyester inside. What is definitely going to happen is that that water, aka the tea that you are drinking, is going to have traces of that plastic bag inside. So if you are a huge tea drinker, I definitely suggest looking at bulk options for tea and getting it like loosely in a paper bag or something instead, and then have a reusable tea egg or tea infuser instead. That is definitely the more sustainable and more healthy choice because yeah tea bags contain plastic then we have aluminium cans i have also made a video about aluminium and how you produce it and the impact of it so if you're more interested in that you can also watch that aha but specifically with cans that you drink from like soda cans beer cans there is a plastic lining on the inside to make sure that the aluminium doesn't react with the beverage inside and studies were conducted that said that if that plastic lining wasn't there the drink would usually last for around three days and then that would be it then it would have gone bad because of the reaction with the aluminium the thing is even though aluminium can be recycled an infinite amount of times over and over again that is not the case for the plastic lining inside which will only be used once and then new plastic lining will be added and that's just how it is it's unideal that's what i'm trying to say another thing that is unideal is lids if you have a mason jar or any kind of jar there will usually be a little lining slash seal on the inside of the lid and that is made from plastic the majority of the time at least maybe it isn't in some specific cases but for the most part a lot of lids especially if you reuse jars that you get in the supermarket then the lining will definitely be plastic and although it's something that you can use and use over and over again it does still contain plastic so if you're going for the perfectionist no plastic ever within this household kind of life then your jars and your upcycle jars are going to disappoint you i don't see this as a giant problem however because you do reuse your jars at home over and over so the fact is that there's a little small plastic seal is not really that big of a deal it's it becomes a problem much quicker when you recycle jars instead of reusing them because then the seal in the lid will obviously be wasted after each use so there it is then and i cannot talk about plastic and plastic and products without also bringing up my absolute favorite which is glitter glitter is glitter and yeah i know that there are plant-based or natural glitters like mica which has its own problems i'm talking about that in another video and can watch that if you read a bit the description what um but you can make glitter out of starch and seaweed and all kinds of things but still the majority of glitter that we use both in makeup and craft supplies and clothing is made from plastic and confetti confetti is like my number one eternal enemy it's so unnecessary and it's just a fancy festive way of throwing plastic in nature and i just cannot so Ditch that right now. Don't ever use confetti glitter. Don't ever use glitter in craft and DIY projects. Find out something else to do. Find out other ways to express yourself because glitter is the absolute worst. It ends up in nature, in animals, it ends up in our water systems, it ends up in oceans, and it also ends up as microplastic in ourselves. Okay, this is another one that actually kind of surprised me a little bit, but normal table salt actually also contains plastic but obviously not intentionally, but it ends up being there because the places where we mine and, you know, gather salt is so affected by plastic pollution that microplastic has been integrated into the salt we put on our tables. And a South Korean study actually found that the average consumer consumes around 2000 microplastic pieces per year as a result of using table salt. They tested out a wide range of different table salt brands and 90% of them contained microplastic. 
and for the exact same reasons as there are microplastic in salt, there are also microplastic in water. There has been water testing done in all continents and all parts of the world and in 86% of the cases there were found microplastic in the water supplies that we use both in agriculture and that we use that comes out of our taps and in bottled water as well. It is such a massive problem. They have been testing human stool all over the world and microbeads has been found in human poo everywhere. It is such an infesting thing and it's something that we really need to be cautious of and you know ditching the items on this list or ditching some of the items and being aware of that it exists is a really good step in the right direction. Then we have something that bothers me a lot. It's kind of the same with confetti but there are you know some types of litter that we don't really regard as litter and this thing a study from the US found that 77% of all consumers did not regard throwing cigarette butts as littering but I'm here to tell you cigarette butts actually contain plastic. Yeah, cigarette butts, although it does seem like they are made from, for instance, cotton, are actually made from polyester and synthetic materials and won't ever compost or biodegrade. And they are, on top of that, extremely harmful both for humans to ingest and also for animals to ingest. A cigarette butt can kill lots of smaller animals and infants as well, so throwing them, for instance, in parks, sidewalks, whatever, dogs can pick them up and eat them, that's extremely toxic and harmful, and children can die. So if you see someone throwing a cigarette butt, and like, it's okay to tell them that that is actually plastic and that is littering, and just so intensely uncool. Then we have wet wipes. Wet wipes being like those wet wipes. God, that was great. But wet wipes are something that you, for instance, use to wash your hands or remove your makeup and they are made from synthetic polyester, not from cotton. And a thing that I've seen, especially in a lot of bigger cities like New York and London, is that the sewage plants have huge issues with people flushing out wet wipes and synthetic wipes down the toilet because it won't ever dissolve like paper for instance like toilet paper dissolves very very quickly and that will never happen with wet wipes because they are made from plastic and as a result they clog up the sewage systems and they are releasing microplastic into nature so skipping out on the wet wipes and using a cotton cloth that you can wash instead is a really really good idea and if you use wet wipes please don't throw them in the toilet <laughs> then we have exfoliating lotions and scrubs Lots of these products contain microplastics because that is, the, that is the exfoliant part, the small microbeads will remove dead skin and that sounds a-okay. Except that all of these microbeads are going to be washed out into nature and into our oceans. In Europe a lot of these products have actually been banned, which I think is amazing, but do definitely think about this if you don't live in the EU or if you import goods from outside the EU into the EU because then this can definitely still be a thing. And you can often read on the back and you can look up the product and see if that brand or that product specifically does contain microplastics and then make an informed decision not to buy that specific product. Another thing that contains small microbeads for a exfoliating purpose is whitening toothpaste. There are small tiny plastic beads in whitening toothpaste because the small beads help polish your teeth and that's how they get whiter. But as soon as you're done using that toothpaste, you're going to again flush it down the drain, which is completely unideal. So this is another thing that you can look it up, find out if your products or the products in your supermarket does contain microplastic and find something that does not. That would be so amazing. So in the EU, a lot of these products are actually banned, but some of the products that are not banned are the long lasting products that you use for a long time that doesn't get flushed down the drain seconds after use, like sunscreens and lipstick. A lot of these products also contain microbeads and they are actually also still legal many places in the EU. And the reason why they contain microbeads is because that, that makes them stay on your skin for longer because the microbeads sort of grab hold to all the small like inconsistencies and imperfections in your skin and makes it stay on for longer. But at what price? <laughs> Number 19 is nail polish. Da, 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 da. Nail polish is a polymer which means that it's made from plastic and although it does dissolve with acetone it won't ever biodegrade and if you just let it chip off it's going to chip off into yeah you guessed it components like for instance microplastic and if you do take off your nail polish it's kind of the same thing as with wet wipes. Don't throw it in the 
toilet it's just a really really bad idea because what happens with synthetic components like for instance polymers in nail polish is that they won't biodegrade in water either they will bioaccumulate because they are synthetics and that will affect ocean life animal lives yourself as we also have come to know um, and a lot of people have been asking me about sustainable nail polishes and what nail polish is and how come it's not sustainable you can make a change form using acetone but you won't ever be able to dissolve the components also i was a huge sucker for nail polishes when i was younger and my nails chipped all the damn time i could never grow them long and i haven't worn nail polish in over six years at this point and they have never been healthier they have never been more amazing so i mean that's also another tip for you just right there and lastly the last thing that i want to include are tampons tampons and pads specifically tampons but you know it, it goes for the most of them and we know there is plastic in the packaging there's plastic if you have like the tiny insertion mechanism as well but there's also plastic inside the tampon itself and bigger brands like for instance Tampax have also told their customer services and they have written out that there is actually plastic and synthetic materials both inside the core of the tampon and the string is also made from polyester. It's something that I didn't know for the longest time but I'm so glad that I switched to zero weight reusable menstrual products like the period underwear, the menstrual cup and the reusable pads because it has made my life easier and now I know I won't Produce any of this trash and I also have tons of videos about these products if you're interested um, and one of the main reasons why I transitioned is because of the wastefulness of normal period products and later I also learned about all the insane chemicals like for instance bleaches and tons of other stuff that is in disposable period products it's absolutely insane that they put these things inside our bodies so that is something that I also really wanted to point out that there's actually a plastic inside the tampon and I have seen in forests uh, all different places that people just throw these things as though they were 100% cotton and for the most part with mo most conventional brands they aren't. So these were 20 things that contain plastic that you might not have known about. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you have anything that you would like to add for a potential part two. And remember to talk to your friends and family about products that contain plastic and what we actually tend to do with them. You can share this video for some extra inspiration. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that you will have an amazing day and see you guys next time. Take really good care of yourselves. Until then, bye! Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!